Welcome to Movie of the Year, the only podcast that has the science and the screaming to unequivocally figure out what the best movie of each year is. This year we're going through 2002 and we're taking a little break from the bracket to talk about Halloween Resurrection. Woo! I am your host, Caitlin, and with me are Mike and Ryan. What in the hell. Mike, I was going to ask, like, I thought 2002 was going to be your season, but this was going to be your season to rise to the top of the podcast ladder. This is my nightmare. Is that why this is happening right now? Because it's October? <laughs> this is my nightmare. So a lot of people are very scared of uh, Mike Myers, because he's always like, yeah, baby, yeah. You but make y- me horny. Oh, my wife. <laughs> All righty then. Do not go in there. The mask. Surely, don't call me serious. Uh, but uh, is your nightmare that like this is your season and this is the seasonal episode for this month? Yes. And Caitlin is the host. I like a it's, good Caitlin hosted show. It's not only is my nightmare that somebody else takes a 2002 movie of the year episode away from me, but that specifically Caitlin yeah. McDougal. It's me. To be fair, uh, every time Caitlin talks to Mike, she puts horns on her head and chases, like, r- runs right towards his face. But then somehow, when anybody else is in the room, she rips them off real yeah. quick. And uh, she's like, What are you talking about? And she, like, lies dead on the floor like a frog. It's a Michigan J Frog <laughs> scenario. Uh, and it's at least getting two Michelin stars, as far as I'm concerned. Wow. That's some good chefs in here. Um, and they're cooking up something good. Could have been three stars, though. Could Not the best three. chefs. Could have been three. Uh, well, we are talking about Halloween Resurrection, and um, this is a movie that I don't have as close of a connection with. What? So I want to know how 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 like what is your relationship with this movie? Can can we be, be, before we dive in? Yeah, uh, I'm uh-huh. gonna interrupt. Yeah, because you're in my goddamn season. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. So you're gonna note her to death. We is found that how out, you're a serial killer? You note people to yeah, death? Yeah, I know the death by a thousand <laughs> notes. We found out off air that Caitlin, the scariest movie Caitlin has ever seen is Twilight. She will not even watch Nightmare Before Christmas or Hocus Pocus. Mm-hmm. To be uh, fair, Caitlin, uh, Twilight covers vampires and what are they called? Wolverines. So <laughs> she's, she, she's fine. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well... And what's the scariest sport? Baseball. And what's the scariest way to watch baseball? Vampires versus Wolverines. And watching people oh. hiss at each other because they're vampires? <laughs> yeah, just like... <laughs> watching Michael Sheen laugh? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's much better. That's much better. I guess at least Greg wouldn't even show up to this episode. Yeah. So I guess you're braver than him. I am indeed. I am indeed. Um, sorry, Greg. But what were you asking? Uh, I was asking about your relationship with the Halloween franchise since I have none. Mike, as like a, you're, I I would say the official horror aficionado of the pot filter oeuvre, uh, the umbrella. Um, How important is, let me ask you this, how important is the first Halloween? And how how important is the Halloween uh, franchise? The first one is massively. Uh, it's a, it's amazing. It, it's groundbreaking. It started, you know, like the slasher, everything, and it's dope to go back and watch. It's slower by our standards now, but it's great. Uh, fuck everything else. I guess I liked the Rob Zombie first one. Uh, I've also I, I've they all start to blend together. As a friend of a friend of mine loves these movies, said they're all the same movie, and I used to agree. And after watching Halloween Resurrection. No, they are not. Yeah. They are not all the same movie. <laughs> These you, are all not cut from the same cloth. Did you keep up on the David Gordon Green final not trilogy? Not seen a single one of the new trilogy. And is that because you're a busy boy, which you are, or because a you're boy. a Halloween purist and you're like, I have got no time for this? No, because I, I watched the Rob Zombie one. I didn't watch the sequel, but I saw the first one and like that well enough. It's, I think there's 13 Halloween movies now. Yeah. I Spooky. I think I have enough Mike Myers, yeah, baby, yeah, in my life. I don't know... <laughs> If I need it, we're like, Scream, I'm a Scream fiend, right? I'll go see every fucking Scream there is. I don't need the shape. Because he doesn't talk. There's no personality there. So I don't, post the first one, I don't really give a shit. And do they keep the same cast each one of these movies too? Well, it's been making since 1979, so oh. mostly no. Okay, all right. But Jamie Lee Curtis has, at this point, done a bunch more than she hasn't? More than you, yeah. And she's done the new three. Uh, she did HTO, and that was a big deal because she came back for that because I think she was out for a few of them oh, before it's, that. It's H20, but that's fine. <laughs> she did Ha 20. Uh, 
And then uh, she... That's what's think, so scary about Michael Myers is every time he comes around the corner, he's like, ha! I'm Michael Myers, I, I, I think contractually got pulled into this one. Yes, and that is what it felt like. That is evident. This uh, is the most Ryan, contractually obligated performance I've ever seen. What is your relationship with this? Uh, so little, so nothing. I, like, I love the fact that um, I'm somebody who hasn't fallen into that trap of, no, man, Good movies are good movies, but all horror movies are good movies, and you have to think that. Uh, and then you just get to watch the good horror movies and not yes. have to watch the shit. So uh, of the Halloween series, I have seen Halloween, mm-hmm. Halloween H2O, which is my first Halloween So the movie. good ones. <laughs> and now Halloween Resurrection, and that is it. Otherwise, That's people it. are talking about, like, Michael Myers... Uh, update, guys. Michael Myers is talking about some sort of season of the witch, and he's going to ride on broomsticks and attack. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Well, I guess na- now that I'm an alderman and I can, I was elected to my city's yeah, yeah, position no, of alderman. You're the, you're the alderman. <laughs> uh, I truly do not get the. I think Jason is my least favorite of all the main slashers. Yeah, no, I've heard of Jason. He's uh, he's the worst. Uh, he thinks he's like, oh, here's why I'm the expert, and you realize he's just ripping off what you just said. Uh. But the the ones who have no personality, so it doesn't matter who's behind the mask. Like, there's a reason I think Freddy is funny. Even Leprechaun, who's low rent Freddy, can try stuff. Uh, and then Scream, like that. There's flavor there. They're trying stuff. But the, the the big bulky, who gives a shit? Who's there? I would much rather watch Aliens, which is a better version of the Silent Killer. Well, as the horror aficionado, do you believe in the whole thing that like it's four good kills? And then we don't care. Like, that it's 90 minutes of shit and four good kills. I guess I would have to have the kind of, not the kind of, not the quality, but the quantity of friends I had in my late teens, early 20s for that to be fun. So has Moody changed your ass? So now what you thought was good as a kid, now you're like, well, I prefer elevated horror. There's good movie or there's good experiences. Mm -hmm. Uh You can have a great experience with a terrible horror movie well typically we talk but about not alone <laughs> on superhero show show we'll talk about how you and i have watched star girl together and like uh-huh. the entire time we'll be talking about how we watched star girl together like that's it uh we watched halloween resurrection apart and yes. what the M- big mistake what the fuck man what the fuck ryan to quote my favorite horror movie pretty woman uh-uh big <laughs> mistake <laughs> Well, I think it would be a big mistake if, if we went on any farther with talking about uh, actual Halloween resurrection. Uh, why don't we talk about that? Coming up. Four years after Halloween H2O, Rick Rosenthal, the director of the second Halloween, Buster Rhymes, and a handful of actors with three names would bring this timeline of Michael Myers to a close. After killing Jamie Lee Curtis off in an extended opening sequence, heavily cribbing from Terminator 2, the movie moves to try to tackle the roles of violence and voyeurism in reality TV and internet culture while ripping off elements of Scream and Blair Witch Project without actually having anything to say. Taste Buds, I ask you this. Could you make a more 2002 parody movie if you tried? And what is the movie trying to say about the future of entertainment? Caitlin, I don't know if a single episode of Movie of the Year ever has been more leading than the intro that you just read. (laughs) Yeah, that was catty. That was... It seems like you do not like this movie. Um, But I honestly already forgot your question, Caitlin. And I'm going (laughs) to... I'm going to ask you to repeat it in a couple yeah. of seconds, but uh, I I cannot remember the, the the last time I saw a movie this terrible. This, this is certainly the worst movie we've ever done in the history of movie of the year. Wow! I like I th- the way that they're making it is like, well, we have watched two of the worst '80s horror movies of all time. That's and all of our education. So let's the, the, let's go ahead and make this. There was so little skill. I, I was shocked to find out that the the director of this directed the second Halloween, which I think people enjoy ish. Uh, there's so little skill here and so little scares that to goose the scares, to juice them up, to cut between scenes, they would just randomly flash Michael Myers' face with like a screen behind it. Instead of like the Star Wars fade, they would do that. That that does not count as a scare, man. I had to keep reminding myself that we are in the two thousand two season. We are not in the 1979 season. We're not in the 1981 mm-hmm. season. We are in the 2002 season. And this level of acting and screenwriting came out of 2002 was baffling to me. 
it it was so bad, especially that at a certain point in trying to make this Kevin Williamson uh. Uh, script of Scream, the script of Scream, and uh, I know what you did last summer, who like and basically Dawson's Creek. Save, and Dawson's <laughs> Creek. He saved the slasher genre, uh, wrote a version of this, and they must have thrown all that out. And then other guys showed up. And I tried to look up. I did, refused to even write the screenwriters' names down because I looked up what they did and went, no, oh, none of this matters. They are all hacks. I mean, uh, Sean Patrick, what's his name? Oh, the actor's Sean Patrick Thomas? Sean Patrick Thomas. Uh, From Save the Last Dance. Just constantly saying, well, your body's a temple. I love cooking. I love food. I love kitchens. Your body's a temple. Anyway, that's the first 10 minutes for me. I'm going to bounce now. Get to get to know some other characters, but that's going to be me for this. And it's just a charming dude. It's so interesting. Oh, to no, watch he's people. a great actor. You know what, Mike? I didn't tell you this while we were watching this. My favorite current working actor is in this movie. Really? And I want to see throughout the course of this podcast if you can guess who that is. Is it the American Pie guy? <laughs> it is not. The other yeah. three namer? So, this, well, this is a collection of actors who are either on their way up in Hollywood or on their way out in Hollywood, but nobody is doing great. <laughs> Caitlin, what was the actual question you asked? The actual question was how, basically how uh, this movie is basically a parody movie in general. Like everything that was made in this movie, isn't this a perfect oh, I, parody no, movie? Like, if, if this is a parody, like I feel like this is like a Pante- no, Warrant coming out with an album seven okay. years after Nevermind comes out. Like I feel yes. like uh, we don't know what's happening in the real world, so we're just going to release this. This is, it's not that they are trying to make a parody, it's, and it's not a parody of horror movies, but the way they're like, oh, and Yahoo chat, like, it, it is stuffed, you could not make a Time Capsule 2002 movie that feels as fake and try hard as the, the reference that they're trying to show, everybody's like, I gotta check my email, look at my Palm Pilot, <laughs> it is, it is baffling, and yes, the uh, things Excuse they... me, I don't care if there's a killer in here, my Tamaguchi needs to be fed, and he needs to be fed <laughs> right <laughs> now. <laughs> I, that, oh man, what a better kill that would have been if a Tamaguchi was starting to whine because it hadn't been fed. Uh, they, they ripped off the scene of Scream where everybody's yelling at what's happening mm-hmm. to, to together. Uh, the, the, they fully take the Blair Witch angle. Uh, it truly is. They're like, well, we've seen modern horror movies. We'll just take bits well, and pieces of those and we can do it. Yes? Mike, we have the line in the very beginning of uh, if you, the camera's high up, it's scary. If the camera's low, it's scary. If the camera's straight on, it's not scary. Almost like and Avril Lavigne is saying, um, you know, she's writing lyrics and she's saying, well, it's, it's not that complicated. It's pretty basic what I'm doing right now. But then they continue to make most of the shots head on. They told you the rules and then ignored their own rules. Do you, let me ask you this before we have to move on. Uh, how much weight do you give in acting in these movies? And do you just assume that they're all going to be bad actors? Because I found these performances to be specifically terrible to watch. Yeah, you you had uh, American Pie guy trying to get one more movie before he's fully kicked out. Try, playing like, I guess, a misogynistic bro. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have low-rent Brittany Murphy before she got to go and star in. Uh, Katie Sackhoff before she got to go star in uh, the Battle Battlestar Galactica. Galactica. And she was, and I'm not blaming her. I blame the directors and the producers yes. and the writers, but she was particularly terrible to she watch. She was horrendous. Uh, the the worst, though, I think, was the final girl, uh, who would go on to do nothing <laughs> uh, with her career. She looked like a young Catherine Hahn, but did not act like a young Catherine Hahn. No, she she. It really feels like the, the the way they all won their chance to die in the Danger House. It feels like she's a Make a Wish kid and won the chance to be in a real Hollywood movie set and wow. start in this movie. That's her. Uh, and then, who I think your favorite working actor in this day and age is uh, Lenny Bruce from the marvelous Ms. Maisel. Uh, I thought it was great. I don't. Not in this movie. He was terrible in this movie. He's the he, curly haired dude who's so many people's arcs don't make sense at all. Uh, and he's one of them. He's like, I'm going to start off this way, and then eventually he's like, I guess I make out with this girl now. I think you're right. I think that you're you got him right. But yeah, it's. Uh, I think he's got curly hair. He's got chubby cheeks for some reason. Such a fit actor. He's so good at acting, but got chubby cheeks. His name is Luke Kirby, and he starts off the movie like, uh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this great. And uh, eventually, he's the one who is making out with a girl, 
gets yeah. her shirt off and gets he is and my favorite get buried in skeletons. Actor. Yeah. Uh you don't see it here. What 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 do you like him from? Uh everything else he's in, Mike. No, yes, but I would love for me and the listeners to know what that is. What was that show that I fucking loved that nobody else would watch, no matter what? Better about Call the, Saul? No. Oh. Everyone no watched the whole Caitlin. world watches that show, Caitlin. Uh, it was about the guy who got out of jail. Oh, oh not Purgatory. And Requiem. Resilience. It starts with an R for sure. Redemption. No, I think that we should spend some time waiting <laughs> yeah. for us to guess what, guess what this is. Uh, the... Uh, you know the chick from uh, Succession who, like, um, Macaulay Culkin is trying to get with? She was the mom in that. Requiem. The show was Requiem. called Requiem. Jerry? And Jerry was the mom on Requiem. Oh. Luke Kirby was a major part of Requiem. And anybody from Requiem is amazing. Wow. Well, let's talk about Requiem or go watch Requiem. I, I think this is some titillating... Um, uh, some experiences that you guys are going through, but I think it's time for us to take a little bit of a break. Many classic horror movies take place in one location. What does Halloween Resurrection do to capitalize on this and add itself to the list alongside Misery, The Thing, The Shining, The Descent, Train to Busan, and this year's Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? Man, Mike, did body, you watch body, Bodies, body, body, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? Not yet. I want you so bad. I want you to. I want to talk to you about it. I, I think I love it. I think I love it. I think I loved it. Um, uh, for this one, fucking nothing. But you, we, we have clearly been given no budget, and no now budget. we have to make this. So we're and then, at, at one location. What is the one location that we're at? Just the house, the Mike Myers house. Yeah. Like, the, the, is it the house from the Halloween? It's supposed to be. I don't know if they filmed. No, Mike. Is it the exact address, <laughs> or otherwise I will not finish this podcast? Well, I guess we're done. Uh, it, it's uh, yeah, it's supposed to be the Mike Myers house, but it's also clearly they're like, well, this is the the one location, yeah, and then they got rained in and didn't have anything cool to do with it, and so they're like, and here's a new location that's sort of part of it, and then here's another new location that's sort of part of that, and none of that, and not in a cool way. I don't love the way the rest of the world seems to have loved Barbarian from this year, uh. but I do think they did a very good. You think the house is this big? No, motherfucker, it's this big. Oh, you thought it was that big? No, but they added their geography in a way that Halloween Resurrection does not at all. Halloween Resurrection is just lazy. But see, this is this is not the gimmick of the movie. The gimmick of the movie is how many Michael Myers are running around. That's, That's what it seems like it should be. Because <laughs> there is a Benny Hill shot. Of Buster Rhymes, Michael Myers, and real Michael Myers like following each other around the house. That is very funny. And there's a point where uh, Buster Rhymes, as Michael Myers, goes up to the real Michael Myers and like pokes him in the head and says, "Bitch, why aren't you fucking trying harder?" And Mike, would you ever talk? To the, uh, besides the joke of that's Michael Myers that Buster right. Rhymes is pointing to, would you ever talk to anybody like that? Like, hey, employee, no. why are you talk? Why are you acting like this? But I'm not an asshole reality TV star, TV show producer, Ryan. Anyway, this movie could have been great if it was like, there are four Michael Myers, and we don't know which one is yes. true. In- if all of it, Instead of all these kids from the same college won the trip to be in this reality Good internet Good for show. all of them. It's so crazy that all four of these kids from the same college won the same trip. That's, Six. That's awesome. Six. Uh, for dangertainment. Uh <laughs> But if they were all given Michael Myers masks, because in theory they were like almost in an escape room, right? They're like, we got to figure out what happened. And they don't know that Buster Rhymes and his company sprinkled fake torture devices. And like, uh, it feels like shitty Meow Wolf. They're like, well, here's a note his mom wrote. Yeah. Here's put the plot together. But not like a A to B to C to D. They just have to open stuff. We find out Michael Myers likes fresh fennel. Like, huh. what, what if Meow Wolf had no lawyers? That's what this is. <laughs> And uh, let's get to Buster Rhymes later, I hope, because yes. I really want to talk to, talk about him. But uh, the whole thing is so bad, and we're not feeling the uh, enclosing walls of what it's like to all be in the same house. It just, every time they want to do something else, they like open up a new door. Hey, look at, what is this, a basement or an attic? Cool, let's do another and, scene here. And the claustrophobic, even if the characters are feeling that way, we're not, especially because we cut away to Busta and Tyra at times watching them, and then to Deckard and his sure. high school shitty straight-to-DVD American Pie-style party. <laughs> uh, and so that makes it not feel... The, 
There's no movie from 2001 that this 2002 movie did not want to emulate. No, all of them. Yeah. Uh, let's, all in the let's kitchen do sink. it all. And while we're doing it all, I think it's time to do a, a lot of nothing as we take a break right now. Who is the MVP here? Buster Rhymes, the audience watching Buster Rhymes, or the jumping roundhouse kick that Buster Rhymes delivers to Michael Myers' head? Mike, can I answer this real quick? Oh, I'm sorry, Caitlin. <laughs> Was there more? There is, a, yeah, one more question. What sets Busta apart from everyone else in the movie? I I want to say that the audience <laughs> is definitely not the MVP. The audience is not yeah. enjoying. I think I really truly hated this from this start to finish. There's no amount of Busta Rhymes, and I love me some Busta Rhymes. There's no amount of Busta Rhymes that could have ever made me enjoy this movie this fucking sucked this was I terrible do think yes but i do think he got what nobody else got is that this could be campy if everybody was bust a level if, if if your best actor in a movie is buster rhymes your movie's in trouble but he got it and there was moments of his beauty that i did not like this movie but there are glimmers that there are scenes i would watch again all right i need to his know kick his yeah. roundhouse kick to michael myers face after being stabbed and he thought also, he was Also, when he kicked, he went, Hia! Oh, yeah! Oh, that was my question. I need you guys There's a build up. for scene for scene play out that, that kick, the roundhouse kick, so everyone can hear it in their ear holes. He, he right, like Michael Myers, I think, has already stabbed him in the shoulder. Oh. He's about to get the final girl. And Busta yells at him and poses in the doorway and does full on like oh, Bruce Lee style hand movements mm-hmm. and like an eight year old. Now, I thought I, I had read. IMDb trivia about how there were more Busta Rhymes reshoots once everybody loved him. But then I realized, looking today, that I had read Taylor, former host of the Superhero <laughs> Show Show's Letterboxd, and how he had said, I, I think that there were Busta Rhymes reshoots. But he does seem like he knows what a terrible movie this is, sort of proving the fact that is terrible. Yeah, this is a terrible movie. And uh, he well, in it is terrible because he's always like, look, you guys better act a fool because I have to get my money. And then at the end, he's like, no one should ever act a fool because oh, his, 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 it, the movie thinks it's trying to say something about reality TV years before it actually exists, right? Or internet culture years before the internet's a real thing. And then Buster Rhymes producer his arc of i need that money i need whatever to yelling at reporters reporting on murders of how they're just vultures after it like, like uh, what what did these these writers thought they said something the arc of busta rhymes is i'm gonna start tmz and then i'm gonna end tmz uh-huh. and i'm gonna end michael myers all in the same movie uh, the final girl the movie almost gets that she's useless because she doesn't really busta rhymes does all of it man all of the heroics at the end. So speaking of uh, some of the girls, there is Tyra Banks in this. And there is Tyra Banks. I need to know everything about Tyra Banks' involvement. And Caitlin, does she, she die? It's important for you to know, Caitlin. Yeah. How? Because uh, she was very important in this time period, especially for me. She, America's like, Next Top Model. To me, like, she was like, she was, she was an important girl in my life. But uh, she literally <laughs> does nothing. She like. Sounds she's she like, dies off screen. Oh. Like, what's up? I'm Tyra Banks. So and she can come back. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. She is like hung by her own intestines oh. off screen. Oh. Yeah. The final Gnarly. girl runs in and there's just a giant pool of blood under her. Oof. Uh, the amount of pools of blood this movie uses, and sometimes people can see the pool of blood. Sometimes even though it takes up the whole room floor, they don't notice it at all. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Tyra is there to pour Busta Rhymes a glass of champagne. Oh. Wow. It. She didn't even smize, Caitlin. No, this is a bad movie. I'm, I'm just if that if she didn't smize. Do you know what this is? This is the uh, this smize during your... her demise, like she has to. <laughs> okay, Caitlin wins. This is listen to your manager instead of your agent. Your manager is like, you should go do this movie. Your agent's mm-hmm. like, don't no, why, what, why? Your manager's like, no, go do this movie. It's like three days, but no, she did nothing. Mm. They did not capitalize. She does end up on the top of the cast list, though, when you Google it. So, Well, that's one of those things like uh, there's so many actors who once they get big, they're like the biggest part of the VHS box mm-hmm. and they're in awe scene. Yeah. Yep. 
I read a tweet, Mike, the other day that was like, uh, film fans, when they're young, I want to watch Casablanca and the 400 Blows and uh, the, the Third Man. And then when they get older, they're like, I want to watch any black and white movie where a man's in a gorilla suit. Isn't that funny? And I just want to, like, I keep running against these people of like, no, it's not fucking funny. And I think watching these fun movies trash out is there. not fun. This is not a fun trash movie, and trash movies are not fun alone. Yes, I agree with that. And I mean, do you remember this movie being better, or did you not see it in the past? This is your first time seeing it? No, I'd seen it and remembered it not being great. Oh, okay. Though I do constantly blend H2O and this together, mm -hmm. and partially maybe because the entire first 15 minutes is them being like, hey, we don't know if you saw H2O, so here's what happened. Mm -hmm. Just two characters we'll never see again talking about H2O. My mm -hmm. letterbox says that I liked H2O. Is that bad? Is that wrong? I think we should do a bonus bonus episode and we Or how about this? H2O. In the next season, whatever year we do, let's do a movie night with the three of us plus four other people and I like, do one of these movies and watch and it together. see if it's better that way. Well, we have some planning to do about our next movie to watch. So I think right now we should take a little break and talk about that. So guys, we did it. We watched it. Uh, all of us watched it for sure. And what do you think? Should I, don't, this... I don't care if you fucking fuckers were with me when I watched it. Mm -hmm. I don't care if there was like a million of you yeah. or zero. This is terrible. This is so terrible. You don't I think it should be in the bracket? This. No, I don't think Caitlin okay. should be in the bracket. Right. Th yeah, I hated I, this. I don't think we will watch a worse movie for movie of the year ever again. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, that that's that. A any last any last sentiments? I've never seen a poor example of like uh, I'm going to try to be edgy but be the le least edgy I could possibly be. Like this is this is horrendous. This is offensive. Okay. Well, before we leave um, Halloween, you know, in we need Resurrection. To more, to more Ryan thoughts? Uh, no, we need to both say something positive about Halloween Resurrection. One more What's Ryan. something you liked about it? Just so we don't, you know, we can keep positive, okay? I, I was fascinated. I don't know if I liked, but Buster Rhymes had one sideburn mm -hmm. that turned into a half side beard that oh. looked like if, uh, like Britney when she wears the mic around her ears. Yeah. So Fuck I like yeah. that. What a choice. Wow. It's also sort of like LL Cool J used to wear one pants leg very low and then uh -huh. one up. Very good. I actually need to Google that image now because Mikey sold me on that image. Not the movie, but the image. Ryan, uh, one positive thing about Halloween Resurrection. One positive thing yep. is probably going to be Dexter, I'm going to say, who's the kid at the computer. Deckard. Deckard. Uh, from Blade Runner. Illusion. Mm. Uh, while all the crazy shit is going on, Deckard is like, well, I have the internet to tell everybody what to do. And so he's furiously f 9 uh all the people to tell them the murders that are going on. Wow. But also is like real lazy about it sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes like, Deckard, get on your shit and do this, please. Wow. Well, uh, that is it for Halloween Resurrection. Coming up this season, Spider-Man, Russian Ark, Battle Royal and so much more. Until then, guys, keep watching those movies. Mm -hmm.